there is not really a specific idea behind, behind uh, this exhibition. It's more that I'm sure my work, how it has developed uh, so far. What is great is to show all the three media I work in together in one room, and this is here at the, at the Biscuit Factory. It's a very nice room. And so to see all the three media beside each other, I hope that it gives, that it is as interesting for the visitor as it, as it is for myself. So we, um, what is in this exhibition, there are the ceramics, which are small scale, uh, have a 3D element and, and are subtle in color. Then there are the lino cuts, which are bigger and bolder. Uh, and where I work with more contrast, uh, often black-white, but, but I introduce as well some colors, which are brighter and clearer than the ceramics. And as well, because the uh, lino cuts are quite flat, the figures come out simpler than, than in the ceramics. With the paintings, it's the same subject, but there I go more with, for color. The, the unifying element between the three media is uh, subject matter. So I, I paint what I see, and I live rurally uh, close to the coast in Scotland. So I've got my favorite elements, which I play with, I would say, nearly in every, uh, in, in every image. And so we've, I've got the sun, I like the clouds, birds, loads of plants. And the, the other unifying uh, element which gives this exhibition the, uh, the, the title is the, that I work in layers of colors. That's partly technically uh, based because for ceramics I, I start with the 3D, work out, working out the 3D design and then later on make color test and layer the color just on top of it as it glazes. With lino cuts the, the color is int introduced by printing one color on top of the other. In between, you have to manipulate the, the printing blocks, but it is, it's layering. And with the paintings there as well, I work and think in, in layers. And, and um, I overpaint a lot. And so that. Uh, the, the, low, the first layers I put on shine through, uh, through the layers I later put on. And I do that by, if I overpaint, I often scratch away, scratch a pattern in it, scratch, scratch lines. Or I put on a transparent pattern, like dots, and then uh, so after a while, building up these uh, yeah, layers. <laughs> We, something emerges and makes sense and I can work with that then to make an image out of it. Yes, I think, that, I think there's a lot of, of similar, similarities, starting with the point that they both are non-elite art forms. I, I think the, the wood cut was the first art form that could be multiplied once the press was invented and so art could be available for, far, for a much bigger public than before. And the ceramics are basically tiles and tiles are part of our environment since ages. So, so I, I, I really like the aspe that aspect for, for both media. I cut with a t kitchen knife, that's my favorite tool for the ceramics. And for the lino cuts and the wood cuts, you, need, you use these little hollowed knives called ga gouges, gorgeous. And, and it's, a, it's a very nice way of creating. I like cutting. As well, you get a, a relief surface, so when the image develops, you not only see it, you feel it as well. And that adds a certain, uh, yeah, adds something additional to the creative process, I think. Uh, I, I do, uh, the, I treat the tiles or ceramics li like prints and do them in additions. 
I use uh, usually in editions of 50, so I sign every, every uh, ceramic and give them an edition number. So that's, uh, the, yeah, in that respect, they're, they're similar. Oh, no, uh, some more. <laughs> uh, lately, I've started to mix them both a bit and uh, press a woodcut into directly into clay to create the, the ceramic relief, which is interesting. It has its technical issues, but it's definitely something I will try and, uh, and to persevere with. Yeah, painting is, is different to them both. They are I'm far freer. The, the ceramics and prints need a lot of planning and, and have technical steps to follow. So it needs a few weeks from the, from the original idea of a, of a print or a ceramic to the end product, and that's not counting the additioning when you have to actually produce the addition. So, so it's a slow process before you see your result, and, and it's 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 a it's a good process, but it's it's not spontaneous. Whereas with pin, with painting, that's quick. That's, you just have the canvas in front of you, so you have your paint, and you can get on with things. So I I uh, work in acrylic. And which dries quickly, so so it allows me to chop and change quickly, and and I do it a lot, and I enjoy it. And as well, a painting I never plan. I, I start with a with a certain subject, let's say a table, and might end up with a garden scene, or I'll have the idea of a really yellow painting. It comes out as a really blue painting in the end. And, and that is because it might, that sound, might sound a bit pretentious, but it's more a dialogue when I do a painting. So I put, do something to the canvas, and that uh, has an effect to the image, good or bad, and then I react again to that, what happened there. And so layer after layer, uh, something shines through um, through the, the, the layers I put then on top of it. So you can either, it, it happens that I just leave one plant standing the whole time and, and change the picture around it, or you can see through a transparent pattern that originally there was actually another painting underneath it. And I like it. And if, it, you, know, if, you, if you want to be philosophical, it's a bit like life, you know, that everything shines a bit through from what was there before. Well, the, um, the folk images come from all over the world. It's, uh, I've always been fascinated by folk or indigenous living and, and art. And I come from the German side close to Denmark where the Vikings had a big influence and, and lived close to the biggest um, Viking museum that there is. So, so that, in my childhood, that was uh, the folk imagery I, uh, I lived with then. Later on, uh, through books and exhibitions, I, I learned about Asian art, African art, South American art, Aboriginals. That's where the dots come from. And, and later on, when I then moved to Scotland, the, the Celtic art, came into play and this intricate patterns, the standing stones, the carvings, you know, in old cemeteries, the chessmans, which I really like, the Louis chessmen. I just find, I just find that, uh, that folk art is very human, very expressive, inventive, loads, has loads of visual ideas and uh, good, great humor. Uh, I, I, and I, and I need art to hit me visually, so, so, so somewhere where words or explanations can't reach, and folk art does it for me. Well, the, unfortunately, there is no full day in studio. <laughs> That's, 
uh, it would be nice, but, but uh, making a living out of art, which I'm very happy to do so, but it, needs a, it means as a business to run as well, and, and that unfortunately needs a lot of time. But so, so if an ideal day would, would be that I go in the morning in the pottery and, and addition the, uh, the, the ceramics. Later on would, would, would do the business stuff on the computer and have the afternoon free for creative work. But it doesn't work out that way. The, I think the business needs more or too much time. So I, I try and work alongside the, the try to do the, the production of course, produce the prints, produce the ceramics, uh, do the business stuff and try and get as much time and hopefully more and more time for, for painting and printmaking and, and uh, creating the ceramic reliefs. So I, I, I create about 15 a year and do the additions. So, yeah. And, and coming back to the idea behind this exhibition is hopefully seeing the three media beside each other will, will give the viewer a feeling for the for uh, for what is behind my work because I don't really know myself. I only have a feeling for, a, for an idea and just do it.